welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubani Gharat. WPP's media investment group restructured its agency brands with five agency brands under the Group M umbrella. Now, under this restructure, Essence and Mediacom were merged to form Essence Mediacom, a new agency that fused the digital and data-driven DNA of Essence with Mediacom's scaled multi-channel audience planning and strategic media expertise. Nick Lawson, the global CEO of Mediacom, now leads this new newly formed Essence Mediacom as a global CEO. He was visiting India recently, the first market he visited after this merger. I caught up with him and spoke to him about the vision for this new entity, India business and with 10,000 people and 120 offices around the world, how are they planning or aiming to become the largest media agency in the world? On his maiden visit to India, we are catching up with Nick. Welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thanks very much, very kind. We officially launched the agency 10 days ago and I had been um, promising uh, Navin since um, COVID really that the first agency that I would visit, the first country I'd visit, would be India. Yeah. So it's a promise, but reality I made that promise because India's been the fastest growing company under my watch for the last sort of three years. And the opportunity here I think is as big as anywhere in the world for us to for us to grow, especially with a new company and launching the new company. So I really wanted to kind of put India, I guess, on the map. Correct. So the first market that you're visiting is the India market. Yeah. What is uh, the kind of goal that you have set out for Naveen in the country? I genuinely believe in the next three years, to four, three to four years anyway, we can probably double in size. We launched as the third biggest agency um, in, uh, in, 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 in India. And I think the potential for us here is exponential. I also think that we can grow uh, our share of what we do for clients as well. I think that part of the proposition of putting Essence and Mediacom together is that the nature that you don't have to choose between now a traditional media agency and a performance agency. We're giving clients the best of both performance together under one roof, one-stop shop. But more than that, I think there's potential with the different types of capabilities that we have between the agencies is to really build on that. So I didn't want to create a slightly better version of Mediacom or a slightly better version of Essence. I really wanted to create something new. It's called Essence Mediacom. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, we'll probably shorten it to EM yeah. <laughs> over time, as you can see walking through the agency. But I, but I think both brands have a global reputation and I want them to be associated together. And I think we, we, you know, we want to really try and challenge the market and challenge our clients around some of the big questions that they're facing right at this moment in time. And they are, how can I get my creative and media to work more closely together? You've got a whole ecosystem, of what I call the new comms economy, building up, and clients are struggling to get the right messaging on those platforms. And I think with our experience, especially with Google as our biggest client, um, across the world, we can answer some of those questions in those areas and really help um, clients there. I think a lot of clients are struggling between that classic dilemma between brand advertising, siloing um, black brand advertising with their uh, performance media as well, and that's how right. do I bring those two together? I think that's a crucial question. And we straddle that bridge, and we've got so much experience across our client base of doing both things, yeah. so helping them solve that. And I also think clients are struggling to justify budgets, right? How, do, how does my marketing budget really pay back on my P&L? How do I justify yeah. the money that I spend to my CEOs? So I'm really interested in becoming much more central to a client's kind of comm strategy and turning us maybe from just a pure play media planning and buying agency into much more of a general comms communications agency. It took about nine months for this entire... Uh merger to happen, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And what was the kind of impact on the talent? Uh, how about cultures? How about merging the yeah. two uh, cultures of Essence and Mediacom together? I believe they have two distinct working yeah. ways and cultures. Yeah. Is that I right? mean, we're Yes, absolutely. It's, a, it's actually a really good question. And, and you're right, agencies are based on culture. And I'm a great believer, you know, there's an old cliche, I guess, the Peter Drucker quote, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. It's true, you can have the greatest plan in the world, but if you haven't got the right culture, you're never going to be successful. 
So culture has really been the main focal point for me and how I build a common culture between those two agencies. And I think, first of all, both cultures were really aligned around, we both put people first. Uh, essentials call their people essentials, and we've kept that as part of our sort of terminology. And Mediacom always said about themselves, people first, better results. So people were always at the heart of our business. And I want uh, Essence Mediacom to be a place where people can grow their careers. So growing as an agency is really important. If you look at my background, I spent 30 years. I started off as somebody's assistant in Mediacom in the early 90s, and I've worked my way right the way through the company. And I want everybody in Essence Mediacom, if they want that opportunity, to have it right. So I think that, number one, is the most important thing, that we're going to be growth orientated. And I think both companies always have been. I think if you look at, uh, and I'm also a great believer in um, looking at personality types. So if I was to define Mediacom's personality and Essence's personality, um, if you look at something like communications dynamics, Mediacom's personalities, I would define us as, as being quite drivers and quite expressive in our nature. So we like, we're very goal orientated. We're very co competitive on new business. And I define Essence's culture as much more uh, analytical, and more amiable, slightly quieter, but we're a formidable uh, we're a formidable combination. So we kind of complete a fully rounded personality when together, and when we truly listen to each other. So you have brought together drivers yeah. and analytical yeah. folks together. And that is, is where that the magic working happens. well? Yeah, and that's where the magic happens, right? And we've spent nine months. I think it's been an incredible journey. I think it's been humbling getting to know the talent across because I know Mediacom inside out. Obviously, having come from that business. But it's been actually really humbling getting to know the Essence talent, crafting them. If you look at the global team that we announced, it's really well balanced between Essence and Mediacom. And again, we've kept country by country in the, in the markets where Essence existed, which existed in essentially six markets. We've really created teams of people now and blended those teams together in those markets. Yeah, so 10,000 people across... It's true. 120 offices around the world. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So yeah. that makes you the largest agency under the new Group M restructuring exercise. Third largest in India, globally the largest agency under the Group M's new structure. Yeah. What are the targets and the goals that you have outlined for the global leadership teams and teams from the other markets? I think Considering we, uh, also the, yeah. uh, the, the challenging global macroeconomic factors. We're pretty close to being the largest global agency, but I'm not totally obsessed with uh, size. I think scale is important in media companies for capability reasons. But I think for me, it's about really positioning ourselves as being crucial to clients' needs. So what I want to be is, I guess, the most recommended agency in the world. And that's what I'm focusing my team on being. So that's a big stretch because I'm talking about not just media agencies, all agencies. Recommended by clients. Recommended by clients. So having said that, what has been the impact on uh, businesses, on clients, post the restructuring exercise, post this merger? How are they looking at this new entity? Well, I think, um, first of all, we, wouldn't, we, we certainly wouldn't have done any merger without talking to some of our key clients um, before we kind of entertained it. The great thing about Essence and Mediacom is we're pretty complementary businesses. We had no major global client conflicts at all. Where we did have some conflict in the UK, we've we maintained two separate offices. So we've got EM and EMX in the UK, which um, and we've talked to the we've talked to both sets of clients about that, and they appreciate the fact that we've kept separation in terms of management teams and offices. So I think we've handled. Uh, that very well. I think we've had to defend some clients on, along the way and we've had to unveil a new proposition to those clients. So we did big global defense of PlayStation across the winter, which we succeeded in doing. So where we've rolled out the EM proposition, it's been incredibly successful, I would say. And all the clients I've talked to have been really, really positive about it. On that note, what does the new business pipeline look like? Any new clients in India and other markets? Since I've been here, I think we've won three clients, none of which I think I can probably Since tell you. Since you've been here, Since I've won. been here this week, oh, wow. we've won three clients. That's fast. So that is, well, that is fast. Um, and I don't know whether he, it was just for, because he wanted to... Uh, uh, condense them all to my arrival, but sure. literally um, since I've been here. So uh, this, 
I mean, Navin has got a, a, a fantastic track record here, okay, of growth. I, I expect our India market to kind of double, really, in the sure. next three or four in the next three or four years. I think we'll be super competitive in this market. I think. I also think this is the best example of W. We're sitting in the WPP campus. I think this is one of the best examples in the world of the power of WPP yeah. um, in any market. Nick, three decades at Mediacom. Well, it does make me sound, uh, yeah. yeah 30 old. years. So Mediacom has seen you through all your life stages. And likewise, you've seen Mediacom through all its life stages. Uh, what has been the journey like and how have you seen this agency evolve over the past 30 years? Well, I, I guess I connect the old world with the new world in media, media agencies. And there's probably very few of us still now that can, can, can do that because you'd have had to have been around 30 years since the start of, I guess, media dependence. So when I joined the industry, we were media departments uh, within creative agencies. And I've seen the the separation, I guess I've seen that journey of the separation of media to us being real strategic partners and making media really important pure play. And now I think we're going to graduate to be kind of the all-rounders, I guess, of the communications industry, which is where I think media agencies will end up in the future. So, and it's been, and that's been an amazing journey. I haven't joined a company though of 10,000, I didn't join a company of 10,000 people. I mean, I joined a company of 34 people. 34 people. 34 people that was bought by Mediacom in the late um, 90s. So I've worked for small companies. I've done pretty much every job in between. Um, in fact, Sue Uniman, who's the, uh, who's the uh, chief strategy officer in the UK, still works for us. I was her assistant. She employed me as her assistant back in 19, uh, 1991. So, uh, so it, it, it's been, I don't, and so I like to think I've worked for about four or five different agencies, if I'm honest. And then Old Mediacom was bought by WPP in, in the mid noughties and then it changed again. And then I ran the UK, I've been in EMEA, I've been global COO and now I'm global CEO. And then we merged with Essence. So it's been a, a really, it's, it's been like 20 different jobs, even though I stayed in the agency, even though I stayed essentially within the same agency. It's been lots and lots of different jobs. And I come back to the point that the only reason I stayed that long is I was given the opportunity to grow with a company and we were a growing company. And I think if you have that in your sort of DNA and you provide that, I think you can give everybody a great pioneering adventure that works for you. And agencies should be about that, right? They should be exciting, dynamic. They should be adventures. We should be pioneering. We should be trying to change what we do as much as we And can. what made you stay in this business for such a long time? Well, I think media, I, 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 we've just done a town hall downstairs, and I was just saying that I don't think there's ever been a better time to work in media. And I think, I thought that when I joined in the first place, secretly I really wanted to be a copywriter. I'm so glad I wasn't that good at it. Um, because media has been the most dynamic, most exciting place to work in the last 30 years. And no more so than today, if you think about what's happening in the market. Your key advice to brands and marketers uh, with utilization of media going forward this year or, you know, in the coming months or years? I think differently. Think about how you break through in the new communications economy, because you cannot do exactly what you were doing before. Eyeballs are shifting and straight play advertising isn't always going to work in the future. So you have to start thinking differently about how you go about um, getting across your messages. And whether you work with us or not, um, use your media agency because they'll be the best place to start. Yeah. To give you relevancy in the platform. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate it. 2023, what's the outlook for the largest advertising holding company in the country? What will be their talent strategy going forward and what's happening at WPP Stream this year? We're catching up with CBL Srinivas to find out more. CBL Srinivas, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you, Shubani. Always a pleasure to be on your show. So, uh, you know, at the start of the year, many of these global leaders have given a very optimistic, positive outlook for India as the leader of the largest agency holding group in the country. Uh, what is, uh, you know, your uh, 
mandate or what is uh, your uh, outline to you know your agencies within WPP? Well, firstly, I think uh, it's fantastic uh, to be sitting in a country where we're pretty much, uh, I would say, the only bright spot, perhaps, or one of the few bright spots uh, as far as the global uh, economy is concerned. I mean, firstly, look at our GDP. Uh, you know, numbers are saying we'll be around six, six and a half or thereabouts versus a global average of 2.9. Uh, you look at the ad spend, uh, TYNY numbers that Group and put out uh, a couple of days ago, 15.5% is what we're expecting yes. uh, against a global average of some 4.6%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so any of these parameters you look at, uh, you know, we are probably uh, a standout country in that sense uh, with decent double-digit uh, ad spend growth. Uh, but having said that, I think uh, it's going to be a bit challenging in the near term uh, when I say that uh, probably the first one and maybe two quarters of this calendar year. Uh, because we saw some sluggishness set in towards the end of last year, which is still kind of continuing. Uh, but we're just hopeful that uh, things will really pick up uh, towards the middle of this year. And uh, we will end up with that double-digit kind of a growth. And how does the new business pipeline look like for this year? India being a growing economy and a lot of newer companies coming into the fray uh, makes it interesting for us to look at expanding uh, the basket in that sense. And also, uh, we also saw from the TYNY studies and some of the other studies, uh, the, the kind of uh, so-called long tail or the, or the retail advertisers uh, that are coming in and uh, the fact that e-commerce is throwing up uh, opportunities for lots of brands to kind of come into the market. It's almost kind of democratizing that space. Uh, that makes it uh, very, very interesting in terms of uh, the way the pipeline is shaping up. So it's not like in the past where you had the traditional sectors where you'd kind of go after uh, a, a few kind of chosen brands or clients, but it's uh, just a massive volume that is there in front of you. And what is going to be the talent strategy in the days to come? The profiles uh, of people that we're hiring uh, has changed uh, over the last few years. Uh, a lot of people uh, with more kind of tech backgrounds uh, who are certified to work on the various digital platforms and e comm platforms. Uh, we're looking at folks with strong data and analytics skill sets uh, to complement, of course, uh, the talent that we have in, in the more traditional spaces. Uh, and as far as the talent strategy is concerned, obviously the one side of it is, is to do with, you know, how do we get more efficient in terms of our hiring and how do we ensure that we have the right policies and, you know, we just make the uh, experience uh, a lot better for our, uh, for our folks. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, equally important is the culture building aspect. Uh, which is where, uh, you know, we have kind of uh, introduced several programs in this market. For example, we run the world's largest women's mentoring program anywhere within WPP in India called Stella. Okay. We have close to 150 women leaders being mentored at any point in time. Uh, we also have uh, a community called Unite that we set up for the LGBTQ plus com uh, community. And uh, a couple of years ago, we created uh, the People Forum, which actually has representation across different levels of the organization and all our agencies to be uh, some kind of a sounding board uh, for the senior management uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, what more we could do to uh, make uh, lives and careers of our people more interesting. Okay, and finally, Stream is happening. What is exciting at this year's uh, WPP Stream? Stream is back with a bang this year after mm. a three-year hiatus. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's called the Unconference and it's probably the coolest Unconference uh, one can go to. Uh, it's a, obviously a by-invite-only event. Mm. Uh, so it's an event which is run across two days uh, and we do it in Jaipur. Uh, we're expecting between 250 to 300 participants. Uh, roughly split uh, equally amongst clients, uh, our own colleagues from WPP agencies and uh, folks from the industry. So who will be coming to stream this year? And we have quite a few interesting, uh, you know, uh, folks from the industry, uh, personalities cutting across uh, cinema, mm, art, music, uh, startups. If you come into stream, firstly, you're expected to not just be a participant, but to contribute. For example, you could either host a discussion or you could conduct a workshop or you could be part of the stream band if you're mm -hmm. into music or you could be part of stream theater this year if you're into acting uh, or you could be part of the stream cookout if you're into cooking. So there are various activities that 
that happen and uh, people then uh, volunteer to become part of any of these groups and over the next two days uh, you then kind of just go with the flow and do your discussions do your cookouts and do everything else mm. and the best part is you just get to meet a lot of interesting people uh, in fact it's it's quite carefully curated because we want to ensure that every year we have at least 60 percent 60 to 70 percent coming to stream for the first time you know to, to kind of keep it fresh and to keep the conversations fresh uh, which is why actually some of us who run stream are not not so popular because we have to turn down a lot of requests uh, but yeah, so that's that, that's part of the fun. So just meeting uh, a lot of interesting people. So exciting next few weeks for you. Thank you so yes. much, Rini. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Shivani.